Now, in the future, if you don't have a blueprint to do your notching with, the easiest way for me to explain how you would measure for your, your tube pieces is let's say you had to put a cross member between your frame and you didn't have the blueprint for it. What you're gonna do is measure the inside distance. So this is 17 and a quarter. And you would cut your tube for this cross member to be 18 and a quarter. Because this is one inch round tubing and we're only gonna notch a half inch off of each end. So you've gotta add an inch to your dimension. So if this is 17 and a quarter, we'll cut it to 18 and a quarter and take a half inch off both sides and that'll fit on the inside here. I'm gonna bring this hole saw bit in closer so that I can bring the tube out to the end and line it up with that hole saw bit. And then I'm also gonna look at it this way. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it in the camera, but I'm, I'm looking basically down the barrel and making sure that my hole saw bit's gonna go right through where I've marked it with my Sharpie. Once everything's lined up, get this nice and tight and make sure if you've changed the angle that you tighten this vise back down. And we're still good. Now the safety with this is when we get about halfway through, it's gonna have one of these pieces that's either going to fold over on the inside of the tube or it will fall out. It's not gonna shoot out, but it'll fall out. And these pieces are steel. And what I want you to do is pause and maybe even back up just slightly to allow this piece to fall out through these, these holes cut in that hole saw. That'll prevent it getting jammed up in your tube and deforming your tube. So then once that falls through, you'll go through and finish the cut. Just got the on off switch over here. See right about the middle, you can see that piece is still hanging on in there and it falls out. And we're gonna keep going through. Once you're finished with your cut, back it out and back it away from your tube because that thing could be pretty toasty and you don't wanna accidentally hit your knuckles on it. Now the next safety thing that I wanna talk about that a lot of kids get cut. I usually am wearing nice tight fitting gloves when I'm doing this, just because I've been cut before by these edges. But they are pretty deceiving. That looks like it is just barely hanging on to that tube. So you're, in your mind you think, oh, I'll just grab it and pull it away. <sighs> Never grab these pieces with your bare hand. Always, always use a pair of pliers to pull that off. Even though it's just barely hanging on there, at least it looks like it, it's still enough to hold that thing on there. And I've had it where I went to pull it off with my glove and those edges are serrated. It cut through my glove into my finger. So always use a pair of pliers to take those pieces off. Never with your bare hand. You can see we didn't, it didn't cut right to our line. And what we would do for these extra pieces, you're fine to leave them there because it's, it's gonna still meet up against the tube nice and tight. Or you can take your grinder and grind it smooth all the way to our mark. Then to do the other side, we would just flip it over, line it up with the seams. But remember, if we're cutting it at one degree, we would actually need to rotate this upside down so that it gets the same degreed angle going the same way as it did on this side, if that makes sense. Now, because we've cut a piece of that off, it may not line up in that jod where it'll grab it, but just lining the edge of that hole saw bit up with our Sharpie mark. And you can see the weld seam on the inside. I'm just gonna make sure that's clocked all the way around to the bottom. So that's lined up with the other side. We're still clocked right and lined up with our Sharpie mark. Look down the barrel, it's looking good. I'm gonna tighten this jaw up. 
when you do tighten it, you can see it'll rotate that tube a little bit. So every now and then just make sure you're holding onto your tube, otherwise it may rotate it in the vise. All right, got it lined up, tighten it down. And again, just like I told you, start it out here, not against the tube. If we started on the tube, this could catch and break this whole saw bit. So we're gonna get started. And we're right on our mark. About halfway through, just pause so that extra piece can fall out. And then back up. Now, because this thing is awesome, it's nice and rigid, uh, you can use good steady pressure through that tube and, and it'll work its way right through it. But that's if that hole saw bit is nice and sharp. On dull ones, you'll see yourself trying to force it through a little bit more. When it gets to that point, we just need to change the hole saw bit and we'll be good. Remember, don't grab that no matter how tempting it is and it looks like you can just peel it off. Don't. It's like a scab, but you don't want to pick them before they're ready. Now, when you're finished tube notching, please pick up all these little pieces. They get swept or they get knocked off on the floor or the pieces that do fall on the floor and they get left around and then you end up getting them stuck to your shoes and it sucks. So there's that tube. Now for this other one, we've got one cut at one degree, which we've already got it set up now at one degree. And the other one would be at seven degrees. So we're gonna cut that one degree first. Make sure it's straight up and down. Hold on to it while I tighten it. Get it tight. Then for our, our second cut, I'm just gonna end up flipping this, cut the other side, and then change the angle versus having to change it back and forth. All right, now to cut this second cut. So we're gonna loosen this and rotate it to that. But first, let's get it lined up to seven degrees, which is probably about right in the middle between five and 10 there. Now we're not going all the way through when we've got a cut like this. So I'm looking down our pre previous cut, making sure it's straight up and down. And I've got it lined up on our mark here. Get it tight. There we go. Flip it around and do the same to the other side. So that's tube notching in a nutshell. Um, some of these tubes are gonna be pretty complicated as far as lining up on this with this vise. And I may have to cut them manually with a die grinder or something like that with a cutoff wheel. Um, once I get all of these notched, the next portion or the next video of this series will be me fitting and tacking this together. Um, Maybe I'll just do a time lapse of that. But there's our tube notching on our tube notcher. When you're finished with this, please sweep up all your chips and your little metal bite pieces and throw them away. This guy could be hot periodically. You're gonna just put a tiny bit of WD-40 on that whole saw blade, keep it lubricated and cooled down. It does not take a lot. You're not gonna sit and drench this thing with WD-40 and get it everywhere. Just one little squirt on that, just to get the, the teeth lubricated, and then it'll be good. And remember, never pull these burrs off with your fingers, always pliers. I've got all of my tube pieces notched. They're labeled, I've got my print out for reference. Now, one thing I may end up going and doing is go back to the computer and add some dimensions here so I know exactly what position some of these cross members are, um, if I can't figure it out out here in the shop. 
But we are fortunate enough to have this jig table. We've got a couple of strong hand clamps that can hold your chassis together while you are fitting it up and tacking it, which can be really nice. I would always, always recommend having your project fit together on as flat a surface as possible. That way you can try to use that as a way to keep everything square and straight. Um, now it's just putting together a big puzzle piece, basically. Um, each one of these notches that I've put in here actually fit really good when you've got them done correctly. If you can see that. So this is a part where three tubes meet in one and the coping and notching generated by that Bentec makes this a super tight weld seam that you'd have to do versus some big open thing that you'd have to try to fill the gap with. So I'll probably just put it on a time lapse while I try to put this puzzle together. Um, but that's, that's basically it. There's no other steps or procedures to this Bentec software other than if I had some dimensions, things like that, that I could follow, which I might still go do. But as you may notice, once you get it out in the real world, like I've mentioned before, things can change. Um, I noticed that the head tube that I'm using, I'm actually taking the head tube off that scooter. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than inch and a half. And that's what I put on my print as an example or for reference. So I know already that I'm gonna have to open these up. So they're not gonna fit perfect for, for this. Um, but they're little things like that are unexpected and hard to plan. So you'll just have to kind of think on your feet when you're out in the shop, but all right. Yeah, some of the things I had, had planned in my mind isn't quite working as well as I thought so out here. Um, I need to shorten this in just a little bit when I add my head tube off the scooter, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be enough room for it to go right through here and still hit that one. But that is my drag trike frame in a gist of it. Um, this is getting the two stroke CR80 motor in it. Got the axle hangers tacked in there. Everything's just tacked. When you guys are fitting your stuff together, only, only, only do tacks. And we leave it tacks all the way until we've got the motor mounted, your jack shaft if you need one, everything is all in place and fits before we actually do any solid welding. That way, if we've got to change anything, it's not gonna be a nightmare to do because we only tacked it together versus welded it solid.